It's extremely important you try to get as much as possible out of these notes and uh, these examples, especially the AP questions uh, that you can. Um, you really try, need to try to avoid just copying the notes down. Um, that's not the same thing. So your brain needs to be engaged and you need to be trying to understand this. So here's an AP question from 1998 before you guys uh, were born. Um, let's look at it uh, one part at a time. The parts are not necessarily totally connected, so just because you might not be able to do one part, that doesn't mean you won't be able to do the other parts. So you want to make sure you give them all a shot. So it says that's the velocity, so you want to pay attention to some of those details as you're reading through. The graph is of the velocity, it's in feet per second. Sometimes people write down the wrong units, like it says feet per second here, but somebody will put meters per second down here. Uh, that's really bad. Um, we're going from 0 to 50, 5 second time intervals, okay. So at, during what intervals of time, intervals of time, is the acceleration positive? Give a reason for your answer. So the question is, when is the acceleration positive? So what you need to think about is, what, it, what does it mean if the acceleration is positive? If the acceleration is positive, they're talking about velocity here. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So if the velocity, if the velocity's derivative was positive, what does that mean should be happening with the velocity? It means the velocity should be increasing. If the velocity is increasing, that means that the acceleration is positive. So that's what we're looking for. So um, the velocity is increasing from 0 to 35. So 0 to 35. And then again from 45 to 50. OK? And that's because acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So it says explain, give a reason for your answer. There's the reason for the answer right there. Okay. So let's go on to the next one. Probably two points, one for that and one for that. Usually the, these are out of nine. Um, okay. Find the average acceleration of the car between 0 and 50. So the average acceleration is going to be uh, the change in the velocity divided by the change in the time. So that's just going to be uh, 72 minus 0 over 50 minus 0. Now, um, and... It doesn't say give units of measure, so that's not going to matter, but uh, this would be feet uh, per second, and uh, this is seconds, so that's definitely going to give us an acceleration. So this is kind of silly, it's easy, but um, you would, in feet per second squared, so maybe, usually, almost always it says indicate units of measure. So we would just box that on the real AP test, we don't want to make any silly mistakes, but minus zero. Um, so you could simplify that a little bit uh, to 36 over 25, but I'm just going to leave it just like that. Okay, so now the next part says find one approximation for the acceleration of the car at 40. So 40 is right here. So an approximation would be the slope, right? The instantaneous is the derivative. So it would be the slope of that line. And so we're, it asked for an approximation. So I'm actually going to use the secant line right here to approximate that. So how am I going to do that? It said 40. So I'm going to go on each side. And I'm going to calculate the slope using those two points on either side of 40. So that's going to be... So the instantaneous acceleration is the derivative. And we can approximate that with that secant line. So that's going to be 60 minus 81 and 45 minus 35. 
and that's still an acceleration, so that's going to be feet per second squared. Okay. So pretty nice stuff so far, I think. Um, highly unlikely they would ask for two slopes like that nowadays. This is an old, pretty old test here. Okay, so the last one. This is actually why this question is in this section of the notes, because there's a Riemann sum, and it's one that we haven't done yet. Um, it's asking for a midpoint Riemann sum. So it's asking for the rectangles, the area of the rectangles. You can approximate an integral. You're going to find, we're going to find this out in the next lesson. Integrals and area, like slopes and derivatives, slopes and derivatives, integrals and area. So we need to find the area of these using these midpoints. So what we're going to do is there's one of our rectangles, and then we're going to go up. So I've already highlighted them in the table in pink. Um, so we're using the midpoints to give us the heights of those rectangles. I guess I only have two left, so I might as well finish that. And then the last one is right there. So there are five rectangles right there. So uh, the formula, if you remember, is b minus a over n. And so that's going to be uh, 50 minus 0 over 5, which is 10, which we can see right there anyway. It's 10. So that's 10. And then we're going to use these heights right here. So that's going to be 12 and 30 and 70 and 81 and 60. And it says using correct units. So if we integrate velocity, what do we get? We get position. So that's going to be feet. And really, we would just box that whole thing. You don't have to do that arithmetic. You do that arithmetic, you make a mistake, you get nothing. So that's an AP question. Look how quickly that went. Bam. Nine points. All right. It's about that time. Be good.